What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Create 0.3 and today we are going to be setting up an infinite iron farm. Now Create makes this extremely easy to do which is awesome because the farm allows us to convert cobblestone which at a certain point becomes a seemingly useless resource into iron which if you're playing with Create will be useful and if you're playing in a mod pack will be even more useful as you will need a ton of it as you're progressing through the game. Now this setup will eventually get you more iron than you could possibly need, especially if you choose to expand upon it as I will talk about later, but it's extremely simple to do, it's very efficient, and this is the most compact I was able to make this, which obviously is the name of the game, because this one is going to be tileable. So it is only three wide and you can continuously just stack these next to each other and assuming you have the stress capacity to support it, you'll be able to run as many of them as you could possibly need to further increase your iron production. Another good thing about this setup is you can adjust it to whatever speed you want, so even if you aren't working with a ton of stress capacity, you can just decrease the speed when you first make it, and if you get more you can increase it in the future, all that's going to do is adjust the production rate of your initial setup even if you don't choose to tile it. So we're not actually going to be doing any crafting in today's episode, which I'm sure some of you are happy about, but we still need to run over the requirements for the system. Now in this chest, I actually have two times as many things as you need, but I did separate them out. The reason being, we're going to set up one of these on camera, run through everything, explain how it works, just so you guys know how it all functions in case you want to make adjustments to it. But then off camera after that, I am going to use the second set to set up another one directly next to it, just to show you guys how it works when you do tile it prove to you guys that it works I guess and show you how you can connect these to all run into one chest if you want to if you don't want to that's totally fine but it is very easy to do in case you want to get all of your iron at one point so for this setup we're going to need two large cog wheels a mechanical drill one encased fan one bucket of lava two water buckets a basin five encased chain drives two brass funnels a mechanical belt one chest for it to all go into one andesite funnel, two filters, a mechanical press, three regular cog wheels, a chute, one vertical gearbox, five shafts, and a millstone. Now, I have glass here as just a building block because we are going to need to put it around all the different fluids, but you can choose to use whatever you want. Obviously, since we're going to be encasing lava, you probably don't want to use a burnable block, but you also might have fire spread turned off, so maybe you don't have to worry about that. But for today's episode, we are going to be using this furnace engine and flywheel setup from last episode as the source for the rotational energy. If you guys are curious, we have 16,000 stress capacity to work with, so we have plenty. But if you're working with a lower stress capacity, just remember, again, that we'll be going over how you can reduce the speed of this so it can work even if you don't really have a crazy setup to go off of for rotational power. But I did make a room downstairs where we can set this up in and it's pretty big down here. Now the reason being, the dimensions of the setup are going to be three wide, which is great because it's tileable, but then it's going to be eight long and six high. So it is a little bit long, but that's counting all the way out to the chest that it's going to dump it in. Thankfully though, you can get a ton of these lined up next to each other, no issue, and really increase the rate of production. So right here is where we have the power coming in, and I am using a rotation speed controller. This is where we're going to adjust the input speed because we can get it all the way up to 96 RPM without any issue. After that, I'm going to discuss a little bit of a bug that starts happening that a lot of people don't seem to address where you won't want to increase the rotational speed any higher than that, and that is when you would want to start tiling this. So I guess we can just jump into it because we got a ton of stuff to go over. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to set up will be the millstone and the mechanical drill. And it's occurring to me now that I probably should have had blocks to build off of when we do this, but I don't. So we're just going to use all the blocks we have right now. So to start off, we are going to begin right in the middle right here. And we're gonna place down a large cog wheel, which will be one block down from where the top of the setup is going to go. And off of that, we are going to put down the mechanical drill. Now the mechanical drill is going to be running at a slightly different speed than the millstone, which is why we are going to use the cog wheels to gear it down, because we want to make sure that we have the proper ratio between when we are collecting our cobble from our cobblestone generator and how long it takes to mill that so that we are not having more than one piece of cobble in the millstone at a time. 
So what we can do is then have a small cog wheel right here, another small cog wheel, and then lastly, we will put another large cog wheel right down here. So now that we have the mechanical drill all set up, we are going to put the millstone directly below what would be right in front of this. So that is where the cobblestone will form. I'm just gonna put glass down here and waste it so I can quickly put this down. But the millstone will go right here. And the great part about this is the millstone, when you normally use this, you simply drop a block in here. So when we break the cobble from the mechanical drill, it'll fall right in. We don't need to use a chute or anything like that to input it, which is great. It's gonna save us some space. So we need to set this area up right up here to be the cobblestone generator. And to do this, we are going to put glass down so that we have the lava right up here. And so we'll put glass right here, right here, right here, and right there. And then we're going to put the water right where this block is, right below this. So we're gonna wanna put glass then, we'll have glass right here and right here and then like that, and then we'll just have to waste another piece of glass really quickly, just like that. And then we can break this one in the center. So the water is gonna go right here, the lava will go up there, and then the stone will form right in front of the drill. So we'll put down the water first and fill that in, just like that, and then we can throw the lava right up there, and then we'll watch as the stone forms there. So when the drill starts going, it'll break this, it'll drop it into the millstone. So an important thing for us to go over is going to be the reasoning behind using the millstone instead of the crushing wheels. Now, if we take a look at the recipe, we are going to be using iron nuggets as the example, because this is the main thing that comes out of our setup, and then we're simply going to turn them into iron ingots. So we get the iron nuggets from washing, and we're actually washing gravel, and we get a 25% chance of flint and a 12% chance of iron nuggets. So not crazy high chances on the iron, but we'll be processing so much of it that it's not really gonna matter. But to get the gravel, we can see there's two different options. The first one being the crushing wheels, the second being the millstone. Now, a lot of people will choose to use the crushing wheels over the millstone, but in this case, you can save a ton of space and a ton of resources simply using the millstone for this because the output's gonna be the same. In cases like ore processing, you want to use the crushing wheels because you get a benefit of getting additional items from the recipe, but there are some recipes that the millstone and the crushing wheels output the exact same thing, and this is one of them. So we're using the millstone in its place, and we will just increase the speed of the millstone to keep up with the mechanical drill, makes it way easier to tile, it makes it way cheaper, and it makes it utilize way less stress, especially if you're starting out with this early on. So that's why we're using the millstone here in place of the crushing wheels, just to clarify in case anyone was wondering. But the next thing we need to do now that we have the cobble and it's in the millstone turned into gravel is put down a chute right out the bottom. Now, because we're doing this, we will have to get the rotational power to the millstone using a regular cog wheel on one of the sides. We'll get to that later. But having the chute come down the bottom, this will drop the gravel right out the base of this whenever it's done. And this is where we now need to wash it. So we're going to get our encased fan and put it on this large cog wheel right here. And this will be blowing our water across the gravel to finish washing it. Now we're gonna put down shafts right below this and then it's going to be five long. So we have one, two, three, four, five, finish it up right here. And then we're gonna put a belt right across this. And this is where our gravel is gonna land. Now some of it will go on the belt, some of it will not. We'll discuss why later but all of the gravel is gonna get washed by this single encased fan, blowing it further down the belt. Now what we need to do is put our water down. So we're going to put glass on each side of this, break this, and the water is going to go right here. Now, obviously it would spill out this side, but we can finish by putting down the basin and we will put that right here. And then we are going to, actually we need to move this over one. Sorry, it should be right here. And then we're going to put down a brass funnel right on this side of it. If I could orient it properly, that's the most important part of this. That always seems to be so difficult when you are setting these things up. I might need to break this chute and we can put this down just so that we're facing the right way. No, apparently it doesn't want to let us get out anyway. We'll just waste some glass and put that back down and that right there. But we can now put the second bucket of water right in here 
and the items will fall right in the water, but they still are going to get washed as they get blown over to this brass funnel. And so then eventually they will be converted to potentially flint and iron. They might turn into nothing, which is totally fine. Some items will get stuck on the belt and get carried across. Others, because there's no room on the belt, will sit on top of it. But they still get blown across, and both of those, whether they're on the belt or just being blown into it, will go in the brass funnel. Now the important thing is that we add a filter to this because we want to utilize the mechanic that allows us to have a really long washing time but doesn't let them go into the basin until they are done. So once we have a filter, if you guys don't know this, we can open it up and we can simply drag things over from JEI into here so we don't need to have them. And we're gonna do iron and then we can do flint. So we'll drag both of these over here click yes, and then put it in the filter slot. Now what this is gonna do is gravel will drop down, it'll get blown by the encased fan using this water, it'll all get pushed right over here, but none of it will go through the funnel until it matches the filter, meaning it's been completely washed, and then we will get both flint and iron in here. Now you might be thinking that's a little bit weird because we should only want the iron in the basin because that's what's gonna get pressed into the ingot, but because of how the basin works and because it allows you to actually pull out items that have yet to be processed, which in most cases is very annoying, in this case it's great because it lets the basin be throughput for the flint, which we don't really care about. So we can put another brass funnel on this side, but we need to set another filter. So again, we wanna let flint through, but this time we wanna get iron, but we want it to be an iron ingot because we wanna make sure that it's only pulling out the fully processed iron, and then we can simply throw the mechanical press right up here, and we wanna make sure it's oriented so it's accepting the rotational power from the sides like this. So, now we've got it coming out, and it's occurring to me that this actually should have been five long, but it should have started right here. So we're gonna break the belt real quick and just move the shaft so it is below the water and then move this over one more. So five long, but I started it in the wrong spot. So there we go, now it's coming out here. And then lastly, we're going to put the chest down right over here and I'm gonna waste another piece of glass right below it. I should get a little bit better at bringing building blocks with me when we're doing this stuff, but we'll put down an andesite funnel right here. The andesite one is fine. We don't need a filter because everything's already been filtered out here. And this chest is where we will end things with flint and iron. Later, I'm going to go over when we connect the tiled setup, how you can ditch the flint. But I know in some mod packs, people want the flint. It's used for things. In Create, it's not. It's basically useless. So we're just gonna ditch it. We will get so much of it compared to iron. But just so that you guys have the option, they will all go into this chest to start. So now we need to power these. And that involves us using some encased chain drives, which I love, and one cog wheel. So we're gonna put down the cog wheel right here. And then we're gonna use the vertical gearbox right here. And this is what's going to bring power to our millstone. And finally, we're gonna take one of the leftover shafts, put it down right here. And then we're going to run encased chain drives up from here like this. And because encased chain drives are awesome, we can then rotate it and this will still transfer rotational power. Then we're gonna pull it out one and we are going to rotate it again and that'll bring our power up to our mechanical press. So everything in here should pretty much be good to go. The last thing is we're going to have to get rotational power from our setup over here, which is going to use one of the shafts. Uh, it'll actually end up using two. Normally it would only use one, but this is two apart, uh, just so we can actually come in here and adjust the speed. And then finally, we are going to need to get rotational power back over here to this setup. Okay guys, so I made one little mistake. We actually don't want the cog wheels on this side. They need to be on the other side. That is very important because this is how we are going to get the rotational power back to the back portion but then we're just gonna connect a shaft right here to the small cog wheel, and our setup is done. If we were to connect this over here, it would start working. So we plug that in, and it appears it's going the wrong way. Very simple, all we have to do is scroll this up so it's a positive version, and now it's the right direction. Now thankfully, everything here should line up, so if you have the rotation going the correct way for one part of it, 
then the rest of it will work too. So this encased fan should be totally fine to blow all the stuff across, even if it does not get on the belt to get carried across, but it should be being washed right now. And we can watch that. And it looks like, do we get anything? Nope, doesn't look like we got anything from that piece. But as you can see, this is going pretty slow, right? It's not very fast. It would still net you iron, right? You don't need to do anything. And maybe you can only support this much stress, right? This isn't making much, 64, 32, really not that much. But we want to do a little bit more. So we are going to crank this up a little bit to 96. And this really kicks it into gear. You can see it's going to go a lot faster. We're going to get way more gravel down here being washed. And that's great because we have the capability of doing that. And this should make it so that the millstone only has one piece of cobble in it at a time. If we right click, we can pull pieces out, but this ratio of the gears in the back makes it so that we can up the speed or decrease it to our liking. And this will never get overflowed because this one is going to be going at half the speed the millstone is going at. So now we should start getting some flint coming through. We should have some iron sitting in here waiting to be broken down or pressed down. I'm trying not to pick up the gravel. Well, maybe we didn't get lucky yet. Either way, you can see what I was talking about where some of the pieces of gravel get caught on the belt. Some pieces don't. Either way, they both get washed. You may end up in a situation where the piece on this part of the belt gets washed and you have iron or flint there. It will very slowly make its way through the actual setup. Do not worry. I know it looks weird. It's not gonna get stuck. It just takes a little bit because the belt inches along since we get so many things dropped on here. So if you need to slow this down, feel free to do so. But we're capping it out at 96 because of one specific issue that occurs that always seems to be overlooked in setups. And this is going to be important to note, especially in case you're playing on a server, because you don't want to lag people out with a ton of entities, especially if you have a ton of these setups next to each other. And that is when you increase it up to something like 128 RPM, you will notice that you get smooth stone, but then you also get cobble immediately formed after you break it. And when you break that cobble, the cobblestone block gets kicked out in a random direction. It's not going to fall through our setup. And I've seen this numerous times and you end up with a ton of entities that take a while to despawn. And if you're running a ton of these and you're kicking out cobblestone all over the place, A, you're going to be wasting resources. You're expending stress units on things that you don't need to, that you're not benefiting from. It looks worse and it's going to cause a mess. So once you get to 96 RPM, I would just suggest making another one of these so that it can continue running. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to set up a second one. So I'm going to cut off camera. We'll put it down right here and I will show you how this does get tiled and how it works. Okay, guys, so both setups are now good. You can see they're both running. It's extremely tileable. You're going to have this be the transfer of rotational power between the two setups, which we had on this one to accept it. Obviously, it's too long over here because I chose to move it one further away from the wall, like I mentioned, but it's going to just keep connecting there as you expand it and it's running perfectly. But obviously I did not connect this to a chest at the end here like I could have because I'm going to show you guys how we can run it all to one chest and how we can get rid of all this flint, which you can see is getting way more than we would iron. So to do this, we're going to put down a shaft. You're going to have to adjust this based on how many of these you have set up. Obviously there is a max length for the belts we can do. I believe it's 20. So if you have a ton of these, you're going to have to have multiple belts connecting, but you're going to get them all the way over to your main chest you want to go to, connect these, and then we're going to bring in rotational power using a horizontal gearbox. So we should be able to do this uh, pretty easily at any of these. We can actually extend this one so that we don't have to waste an additional shaft, and this should work too. If we just connect them like this, put this down, you can see it's going in the correct direction. So you just hook this up to the furthest one that your belt will be adjacent to. And now the items will come in here so long as we put down an additional and a site funnel. So now they're all getting collected in this chest. That's great. If you want to save all of the flint, then you're good to go. But a bunch of you guys are not going to care about having stacks and stacks of flint. It's actually going to be a detriment because you're going to want to make sure that you have enough room in here if you decide to AFK for four days. Uh, to collect all of your iron. So an easy way to get rid of this will be to put a depot down right next to your chest, grab out 
a brass funnel, put it down on this side, put a filter of just a single item for flint, and then we're gonna dig down below this, two blocks, we're gonna put down lava right here, and then we're gonna put a chute right here, and then fill this back in. Now, anything that ends up on here immediately gets dumped directly into the lava because a chute will just dump it on the ground and it gets burned up. So, we're only gonna be left with iron, which is exactly what we want. And you'll see as these are running that they're going to eventually smash down all the nuggets. And this is great because we've talked about it before how the basins have an internal inventory cap for how many items they can have. And that was an issue with ore processing when you can have tons of different kinds of nuggets in there. So you have to limit it so they only go in when you have nine. In this case, because we're only gonna have iron nuggets and flint, the maximum amount of items we could have in here at any given time would be 10. And that's assuming we get flint and iron at the same time, bringing it to nine nuggets and the flint coming in here. And that's way less than the cap is, so you're never gonna have to worry about hitting the max and delaying your system by preventing the belt from continuing to turn and carry anything in here. So this is the setup. Again, you can keep expanding upon it if you want more iron. I think this is crazy awesome. It looks cool. It's run super fast, and I just love the noise of listening to it break and the occasional clang of the uh, mechanical press coming down and making the iron. So I would definitely advise you guys set this up in your world. You'll probably never have to worry about iron again as you're you know, meandering around your world doing stuff. I know a ton of us AFK in our worlds. So you'll come back to some nice iron and you should be good. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode and found it informative and entertaining. And I will talk to you later.